Hello everyone, tonight we are in the basement. We've moved games around because, well, the one in the reliable corner decided not to be reliable. Of course, I always put the games in the far corner here that I don't need to work on because, hey, they work great. But Stanley here of Donkey Kong 3 has decided that uh, he doesn't want to work. So we're gonna power it on, so we'll see what's going on. And we'll see if we get any luck fixing it. Maybe it's a quick fix. Maybe it's not. I don't know. We'll find out. But let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Let's go ahead and plug it in and turn it on and see what happens. So we got a bunch of issues happening here as it kind of settles in. This is fun. This is not fun. I don't know what's actually happening. We'll try taking a look inside and seeing what happens, I guess. It's definitely glitching somehow. I like that it flips upside down for like cocktail mode almost. Huh. And then I guess it just keeps doing this if I reset it. Alright. Let's turn it off and go inside and see what we can find. Alright, we are now inside. The Donkey Kong 3, which is in the Donkey Kong Jr. cabinet here. And this is one of the earlier games that I have gotten. So it's been a while since it's been gone through. Um, there's the Donkey Kong 3 board. I do have a Nintendo to JAMA adapter here. So we'll see if we can show that here. There it is. And I do have a switching power supply in here that maybe the voltage could be off, I don't know. And, but we do have the 20 easy monitor up there. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna go through, we're gonna check voltage, and well, yeah, we'll start with checking voltage. Let's check the voltage. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug this in. And uh, where's my plug? There it is. So we hear it turn on. I know it's going to glitch out. So we're looking at my multimeter here. We're going to take this multimeter. We're going to put it on DC volts. We'll check for our 5 volts here. So we'll just come over and turn it on. We should have nothing. Maybe we'll get in a couple of little bits there because the probes are on the carpet. I'm going to make sure that I am kind of statically discharged as well because it's getting cool out and, you know, we don't want to make sure that we, we don't want to blow anything up because I have that kind of luck. So we'll go ahead and we'll test some voltage here. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. I don't know. I don't know. So we got a ground over here in our five. 4.85. That might be a little low. That could be part of the problem. We'll try dialing it up, but this power supply could be failing, so we'll um we'll turn up the voltage on it and let it run, see what happens. But uh I gotta figure out where everything is on that thing, because it's way in the back there. Of course I can't reach it. Of course! So if you can't reach your voltage when you're turning it on, or while it's on, turn it off and we'll go from there. We shut it off and uh, we'll adjust the voltage here. So if you ever need to adjust the voltage on your power supply, it's in here. I know it's super hard to see, but we're going to try. Hold on. 
try this angle here. So here's the power supply, it's screwed in. But there is a knob here with an H pointing that way, kind of curling around. Let me see if I can shine the light over that way. See, now you see it? The little red knob. If I go like that. So there's my red knob. We're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna turn it a little bit And maybe that'll have done what we need to do. And we'll check, come in and check our voltage again. All right, so we're gonna go in. We've adjusted it a little bit. Turn it on. Kind of at 502 here at the JAMA board. And now we're gonna go on the other side and watch it probably not work. I can hear it, it wants to boot. It wants to boot. You can also check voltage on your chips, so we'll go ahead and check that. But you know, I've also seen power supplies go, even though they can put out the right voltage. So, let's see. Yeah, it's definitely rebooting, I can hear it. Ooh, 3.6 volts? That's not enough. Yeah, okay. I'm wondering. We're gonna try reseeding a couple things, but yeah, 3.6 volts is way too low at the board. Maybe it's the power supply. Maybe something else gave way and is dry draining it, but there should be more voltage. So we've got five volts here, but we don't have five volts there on the board. So before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and swap out the power supply before I do any sort of uh, any other checking on the board. Um, it's good to have another power supply on hand. They're about 25 bucks. Uh, this is the one that I had from the test bench that yeah, you know really hasn't gotten much use. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take we we scavenged this one. It's good to have these on hand. I, I realized I now need to order some more. So. I will order some more power supplies there. Like I said, they're about $25, and they're good to have on hand, especially for any of your JAMA games. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull this one out, and we'll swap over uh, to the other one. Always make sure that you're disconnected from the power on the wall, because sometimes these older games are like wired so that they are always on. And it'll be like the monitor that shuts off. So let's make sure we that is unplugged. And there is our older Peter Chow power supply. So the, what I do now is I, I literally just swap these over one at a time. You can take a picture, but as we look at this, um, your AC is always down at the bottom usually. Your 5 volts is always at the top, and you'll have a couple ground lugs. Your negative 5 and your 12. And then a field ground, it may or may not be there. Oftentimes it's not. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do now. We're just going to swap them over. Let's, we'll compare the two side by side. See if there's any difference. And there is. Um, this one has the AC in at the bottom and followed by the field ground. But our positive 5 is actually down here at the bottom versus at the top. I honestly like it when it's at the top better. But, you know, such is life. So we're going to go ahead and we'll swap everything over. And this is using generally a pretty standard colors. Red is often 5 volts, black is ground, yellow is negative 5, and orange is your positive 12. And when you're measuring, I believe uh, the, the 12 volts is unregulated. So it may clock in at like 14 volts, and that's okay. So really when we're dialing it in, we're dialing in the 5 volts. Um, to the power supply. Now this one has been adjusted. It may need some other adjustment and also we need to notice that while the Peter Chow one goes to the left to increase, this one looks like it is going to the right to increase. So just things to keep in mind. But let's go ahead and we'll swap them over. And you don't need to do it in any particular order. I generally just suggest going one at a time. Let's pull out our two 
AC here. And we're probably going to need to move it over and do it the other way because we don't have enough slack. But we'll do that as soon as we move this a these ACs over. Maybe. There we go. Two. Nice easy job. Sopping out a power supply, you know, and you always hope it fixes it. Alright. And next up we've got our 12 volts. Maybe. I gotta go get a real screwdriver. We're back. We got a real screwdriver versus a power one just to get the extra leverage we need. Alright. Slide out 12 volts. Maybe. Jesus. 12 volts is at the top this time, so we'll go ahead and we'll slide that in. These prongs look a little wider. There we go. All right, let's give everything a quick tug, make sure nothing comes out. We're good, we'll take the old Peter Chow out. We'll go ahead and we'll put this here like that. I'm gonna leave it like that so I can see it and adjust it. Going to check voltage real quick without it connected to the board. I'll leave it connected to just the adapter here. I just wanna make sure that I'm not like sky high and then we'll do it again with load. I, some people say to just connect a light bulb or something. This will should do the job at the very least. So we'll go ahead and do that. If we can get it to sit somewhere or float in space, I don't know. <laughs> sure, it's there. Let me go get the meter. All right, so we've got our meter put into the edge connector here. That way it could stay. We tapped into where the five volts, which is where the red is, and the ground, which is the black here. We'll test our voltage. That's just gonna kind of float there for now. See, there it is floating. We'll go ahead and we'll turn on our meter. And we'll plug it in. And then we have to turn it on. So we have 5.1 volts right there. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Five point oh five should be good enough. And all I had to do was adjust that knob there. So I'm going to go ahead and now I'll plug in the connector. And you know, I don't feel like it's going to work, but. I like to say I tried, because when my things break, it's not usually an easy fix. And that's just how to how it goes. And I'm gonna call people up and be like, "Help me!" All right. on. Alright, that, that was all done. There it is. It's there. It's in. 
Will it work? I don't know. We'll check voltage again too. Nope, heard it, heard it make its noise. Burp, burp, burp. It, it's like it wants to go, but let, we'll check voltage and watch it be not right. There we go, we got our meter resting there. Let's move the camera. All right, so there we go. You probably, let's see, can I put this down like this? Can you see it there? Nope. <laughs> How about like that? Nope. It really needs to be like this, huh? Um, maybe like this? Will that work? It works good enough. Now you can see what happens. So we're gonna check the voltage again. I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna tap right. I'm gonna check it in a couple spots. Um, so we got 4.87 volts here. You know, now I'm starting to think that that's not the power supply. That's the issue. Down the line, about the same. Actually, there's a little bit of a drop there before. Um, you can check it on these caps here too. These um, kind of axial caps up here at the top. Four point eight two. We are consistent. Well, let's just crank up the voltage. Oh, it made that stupid noise again. That's not good enough. 4.9. I didn't turn it up enough. Can I leave this here and adjust? No. I don't think I can. That's too hard. I need I should get some clips. I just rest it in here. Perfect. Don't judge. Get it up to five. All right, we're at five volts. I can hear it's still not happy. Because I bet you it's not five volts there at the chips. We're going to turn it off and... See what happens. We'll reboot it. Mm -mm. Not convinced. Uh, nope, you hear it. It's trying. You hear that noise? Boom, boop, 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 boop. We have five volts there. We're at five volts. Okay. Let's go around to the front and see what look what it does. It's probably not working. And then we'll reseat stuff. It's still broken. Look, it's still broken. What's going on? Why is it dead? Just work. All right, we're gonna take the board out and reseat stuff. So I will be the first to admit that my board repair skills are really bad. But I do, and I can see that there is some board work that has been done I can see a green wire going over here from this resistor to this chip. So that must have mean that or meant that there was a broken trace somewhere at some point that somebody found. So it's possible that, you know, something like that could have come undone. I'm going to flip it over. And we'll take a look at the other side. See if there's anything going on here. Um, We've got another jumper wire here that my guess is 
probably not factory, but I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. So the issue, ooh, I'll check that. So I'm looking right here. It's kind of a resistor that's all crummy. Let's see if, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but right in here. It could just be dirt or, I don't know. I like to think I know what I'm doing, but when it comes to this level stuff, there are people who know way better than I do. Um, so there's a couple things we can do. So this is the video board side of things. And then on the other side, we have the CPU board. There was a battery here. It is uh, rusting away, but there's no batteries in here. This is just, I don't think it's not corroded. It's just, it's legitimately rusty. Um, we have good voltage. So I think what I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to reseat the ribbon cables here on the end. And, you know, that's a point where things could possibly fail. So we'll go ahead and we'll just kind of reseat these. Maybe it's coming out real slow. Woo. There we go. Let's kind of put that back in. We'll do another one. Do we'll do both. We'll do the other side as well. Just kind of checking. You know, everything looks clean, but I guess you could get out your meter and check. I will check that jumper, a couple of those two jumper wires as well, just for continuity. And uh, when they, when people say, hey, did you try reseeding things? Well, there you go. This is reseeding things. And sometimes it fixes it. Sometimes it doesn't. You can often figure this out by touching and wiggling things when it's on, you know, in. You can push on them and things might change, but... Nothing was really changing. I don't have another CPU, I don't believe, to put into this, so... I mean, could the CPU have failed? It's possible. All right, so we've done both sides. Um, let's, uh, let's see. Well, let's get out our meter. We're on this side. We'll check that jumper wire. So on my meter here, I'm putting it over to resistance. You can check for resistance if you don't have continuity, that little... And the sound icon there is continuity. And what that does is checks for continuity when you have two wires making you know, a connection between the two. This will give you an audible beep, which is super nice for stuff like this. So I'm just gonna, we'll come over and check. Yeah, I expected that one to be good. And you can go through and check other traces like I could go further down this line. I think we go to, oh. we go to here? Can't tell. I don't think it does. I think I'm guessing. Yeah, okay, we're good. So I, what I basically did is I checked it further down the line here. Um, go ahead and flip it over. We'll check this other one, which is going really far. I'm going to turn it so I can actually see it. Let's see here. So we're going from this resistor to this leg. Yeah, we are good. We are good there. So I, I don't know. So Looks like we've got a couple CPUs here. I think this 2A03, RP2A03, those are CPUs. Um, I'm not sure, but maybe that's sound. That's like a sound processor. I don't really know. I don't know much, but these are our ROMs here. So I'm gonna go through and reseat those, reseat the CPUs. Um, I'm not going to touch those over there. 
I don't think that's a fact. I'm, well, I can. It doesn't matter. We'll, we'll go through and we'll do it. And uh, we'll hope for the best. So when they say to reseat something, basically you're coming in, you're removing, and I'm just using a little tiny flathead screwdriver, and you can do it this way, and you have to be very careful that you don't bend any legs. Okay, you also want to make sure you watch your orientation. There's a little tiny divot here in this corner. You want to make sure that that matches up with, uh, you know, the little notch here. So on the board, there's a little notch in here, and that helps you orientate, orientate it. So one thing I like to do is just kind of check my legs, and I'll check the other side, and they're good. Sometimes there's corrosion on them, and if you get corrosion on them, that's a, an excellent way of going, oh yeah, no wonder it doesn't work. So, there we go. We're gonna go through and we'll do, we'll do all these, but I'm not gonna do all these on camera, because let's be serious. That's really boring. So, I, I, I am not quick at removing these, but I've broken legs in the past. So now I'm super cautious. And um, there's one other thing I want to make sure that you do or don't do. Well, don't do it. So sometimes on sockets, this little center area does not exist. And what people have a tendency to do is they take their screwdriver and they stick it underneath and they use this actual circuit board is leverage, and when they do that, they actually scratch the traces underneath, and when they scratch the traces, sometimes they break the traces, and then things are even worse than they were, because you don't know where you did that. So I just like to check again. So check, we're good. And then when you do put these in, please make sure that your legs are actually in. This is probably easier to do with new chips than it is old chips, but you don't know. I don't know. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to do all these and I'll do the other ones on the other side. So I just pulled this chip out and uh, it's the Z80, which is a processor. So I'm just pointing that out to you. So I know this is probably not going to focus in any sort of reasonable time, but you know, just, just focus. Just do it. It won't. Who cares? It says Z80 on it, trust me. Um, and that was over here. And you know, it, it, the legs look a little dirty. So we're gonna go ahead and um, you can put contact cleaner, you can clean the legs off. They make fiberglass pens that work really well. Um, but you know, I'm gonna try that. I'll put, spray some contact cleaner in there and we'll start with that because that's what I've got handy right now. So we're going to use this. This is a electronics cleaner. Um, normally I have deoxid, but that's out in the garage and the garage is really cold. And uh, we're going to do this because I'm not convinced that this is actually going to do anything in this scenario here, but I'm going to do it anyway. So here's our electronics cleaner. And maybe this will be the lucky charm, but my luck, as I said, does not really go that way. And then we'll put it back in. This dries pretty quick. You know, you're not supposed to do this with it on, but maybe, maybe that'll do it. Maybe that'll be the magic. Uh, probably not. All right, I'm gonna keep going. So we've reseated everything that isn't a socket. We reseated this rainbow connector here, these ribbon cables, every socket that's here. Even these other ones that I didn't think would have anything to do with anything. We reseated them. Now I'm going to go plug it back in. Yeah, it's probably not going to work, but at least I can cross that off the list before I start asking people for help. So, it's not working. Uh, the credit says zero 
and it's upside down. If I try to put a credit in, nothing. Nada. I'm going to power cycle it for pahas. <laughs> Isn't that fun? I don't. It's really done variations of that already, so I say no progress. Ooh, fun noise! I even said the word red. I can't tell if it's resetting. I feel like it is resetting. Why is it resetting? I don't know! What if I swap the CPUs? I wonder if that'll do anything. Well, it's doing the same garbage. And I don't have another Z80, so... Not enough of a change here. Still more... Garbage. Well, I think I'm going to call this video done for the Donkey Kong 3 for now, just because I'm out of ideas, Stanley. I don't know what to do. I guess I could go look up the stuff on the internets and see what happens. Well, thanks for watching Nothing Get Accomplished and wasting your time. Man, do I feel bad. But... I'm sorry. We can't fix everything the first time. Thanks a lot, Stanley. Thanks a lot. But wait, there is something I could do to get by for now. Uh, yeah, I have a 16 one board lying around. Um, I could try plugging this in because there's a JAMA adapter in there. That, well, a JAMA harness that goes to an adapter for the Donkey Kong 3. So I guess I could try putting this in. And maybe at the very least we can play Donkey Kong 3 still. Why not try it? Why not? So now, as you judge away, and I pull out the Donkey Kong 3 board. Maybe. There we go. Pull out the Donkey Kong 3 board. Oh, uh, that's going... Oh, uh, that's not going to work. Because while it has a JAMA harness, where does the video go to? Ah, here's the video. I can't even, like, plug it in easily. Can I? Do I have the stuff I need? I don't know. I have to look. I don't think I do, because this has got a 20EZ monitor in it. And it uses this other cable. Uh, it doesn't make my life easy. I don't know. Well, i got to pull the board out anyway, so let's pull the board out. Ah, man. Now I'm going to go check my parts stash. Maybe I've got like another cable or or something I can just like temporarily rig up. I don't think I do. <sighs> so for a hot second I thought I had a good idea. Um, but I didn't because that's not how it's going to work for me. So while I do have a JAMA connector in here, the video cable 
apparently I snipped off at one point in time and I don't remember what it was. I did find this 20 Easy inverter board, but I don't think I've got everything I need to make it work. I do need another connector to go onto the input side and then I can put this onto the monitor, but again, I don't have. I don't think I've got another cable to make it work because this cable goes straight to the board. It goes straight to the monitor. So the idea is done with at least for now. There's nothing else I can do unless I order parts or get that board fixed. But we've reseated everything, we've changed the power supply out, and uh, alas, none of those fixed it. <sighs> Bummer. We have a dead cabinet in our mill, you know, amongst us. It's time to get it out of here. Or fix it. Alright, guys. We tried. Thanks again for watching. This is a waste of everybody's time this time. But we'll put it in the series.